Thank you, Steve, for that very nice introduction. Not sure I'm a hero of anything, but uh, anyway. Uh, I thank you so much also for, for giving me this award. It's a, it's a tremendous honor, and I'm very happy also to share it with Georges. Just have to get off. All right. So I'm going to tell you today about um, the work that we do in the lab with CRISPR-Cas systems. And how, how, do, how do we study this in the natural setup in, in bacteria? So to begin with, uh, I put a, a series of different viruses just to show you that um, all organisms on Earth uh, are infected by viruses and other pathogens. And in response to that, uh, they need to develop immune systems. And my lab work with bacteria, and uh, the main pathogen of bacteria is uh, bacteriophages. These are viruses that infect bacteria and that are very deadly. Uh, they can be very deadly in a matter of hours. They can wipe out complete bacterial populations. And this year mar marks the 100-year uh, anniversary of the discovery of phages by Tor and Derelle. And since then, scientists have uh, found many different um, resistant mechanisms that bacteria have to resist bacteriophage infection, but none of them is, uh, but only one of them is actually something that uh, is very close to uh, an, an, an actual immune system, and that is encoded by CRISPR loci. CRISPR stands for Cluster Regularly Interspaced Short Palindromic Repeats, which is a very long acronym, but it represents very well the architecture of these loci. Here's a cartoon representation of, of CRISPR loci. And you will see here uh, that um, in white, we have a set of repeats. So that's the C and the R of the acronym. CRISPR are, uh, is a cluster of repetitive sequences. Uh, the repeats are short, and they are actually semi-palindromic. But the most important part of, of the acronym and out of CRISPR system is that they're regularly interspaced. You see here that in between repeats, there are intervening sequences that we call spacers. And repeats are not adjacent to one another as in most repeat loci. So the spacer sequence, uh, it was uh, discovered uh, first by, by informatics, by informatic analysis of, of CRISPR loci of bacteria, that the spacer sequences match the sequence of phages and plasmids that infect bacteria. And therefore, it was proposed that um, this CRISPR loci will Im will be involved in some sort of defense against these elements. And uh, later on, uh, it was demonstrated experimentally by me and others uh, that the, uh, the actually uh, bacterium that has a spacer sequence matching a phage or a plasmid is immune to infection by uh, that uh, phage or plasmids. In other words, the spacers provide sequence-specific immunity. And whereas the spacers uh, dictate the, the targets of the CRISPR immune response, the CAS genes, which is a set of genes, uh, um, CRISPR associated genes, abbrevi abbreviated CAS, that are usually flanking the cluster of repeats, these are the genes that are responsible for executing the immune response. So CRISPR immunity is adaptive, and if you have your culture of bacteria, you infect it with a bacteriophage of choice. I said that bacteriophages are very good at killing bacteria. In a matter of hours, you have your culture uh, clear of bacteria. But not all bacteria die. There are always some bacteriophage-resistant mutants. And if the, wild type, the, the CRISPR system of the uh, uh, original culture looked like this, when we isolate the bacteria that survive phage infection, the resistant mutants, and we look at the CRISPR array, we found uh, an extension of that CRISPR array. Uh, a new, an extra repeat is, is introduced, and uh, a new spacer is also introduced. And on purpose here, I put uh, the new spacer in red, the same color of the bacteriophage that was used to infect the cell, because the new spacer uh, has a sequence that is present in the bacteriophage that was used to infect the, the, the culture. And here, this is the first uh, experimental demonstration of CRISPR immunity that show exactly this. This is the wild type strain. This is sensitivity to phage infection, very sensitive. Uh, this is the wild type strain that doesn't have any spacer against the phage that was used in this experiment. And the new resistant mutants where uh, bacteria incorporated two or one uh, new spacer against the phage, then the phage propagation is reduced by six 
like ab about six orders of magnitude. So it's very strong immunity that CRISPR provides. So how is that the CRISPR spacers provide immunity? They do that by uh, 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 being the template for a small antisense RNA that we call the CRISPR RNA. This CRISPR RNA can form a ribonucleo protein complex with some of the Cas genes, uh, more specifically with RNA-guided Cas nucleases. And that complex is able to scan the viral or plasmid DNA, uh, and when <clears throat> a perfect match is found, then uh, the viral DNA is cleaved, and then that's, that's the end of infection. The viral genome is destroyed. As Steve mentioned, as a postdoc in Eric Sonheimer's lab, I uh, determined that the target of CRISPR immunity were DNA molecules and not RNA molecules. And at the time, <clears throat> CRISPR was mostly a bioinformatics field, and, and the bioinformaticians, they, they, they predicted that this was something like RNAi of bacteria. So the RNA guides will be targeting uh, transcripts or, mole or, or RNA of viruses. But we did uh, experiments that I don't have time to show you to determine that the that the DNA uh, was the target of CRISPR immunity. And that was important for the development of, of CRISPR technologies, also, of course, to understand the, the basic biology of CRISPR. And at the end of the paper, we, know, we made a note that uh, it would be a very useful biotechnological application to, because it could lead to the destruction of specific sequences, uh, uh, DNA sequences, and that provided that CRISPR could be transported out of the bacterial system. And in, in the last couple of years, that simple comment, that was just a comment at the time, was possible, was, was actually, uh, 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 it, it became true that CRISPR could, be, could have very important biotechnological applications in what is called the CRISPR revolution. The work of, of many labs determined uh, that CRISPR nucleases can be used for introducing site-specific mutations in many uh, eukaryotic organisms. Uh, the CRISPR nucleus can be programmed by, simply programmed by a CRISPR RNA to cut the gene of interest, and that double-stranded DNA cut that the CRISPR nucleus performs, that can be repaired in different ways to introduce mutations in, in eukaryotic organisms. I was a little bit a part of, of, of that, of the development of the technologies, mainly through collaboration with Fang Zhang at MIT, we were first, with the, we'll be the, the first of two groups to, uh, one of the two groups that first demonstrated uh, that CRISPR can be uh, used for um, making genome mod genetic editing of uh, eukaryotic cells. We did also genome editing of bacteria with CRISPR. And then from then, um, many other labs used it to make uh, uh, transgenic or uh, genetic modified invertebrates, such as C. elegans and Drosophila, fish, plants, uh, mice, pigs, monkeys. And I stopped there, and I hope they also the community stops there to, because there's a possibility now of using CRISPR to modify the human germline, and that, of course, has many very serious ethical considerations that need to be thought about. But my lab uh, in, but what did actually very little for, for the technology development, per se. Uh, we always studied the basic biology of CRISPR systems, and there's a lot of basic biology to cover, because CRISPR systems are very diverse. There are about 50 different Cas gene families, and each bacterium or each CRISPR system has uh, about from five to 10 Cas genes uh, uh, in the Cas locus, in the CRISPR locus. And depending on which Cas genes are present, the CRISPR systems can be classified into five different groups. And we've been very interested in studying type three CRISPR systems. And in the, in the next half of my talk, I will tell you what we learned from studying uh, this uh, rather complicated CRISPR systems. The simplest ones is the type two system, which is the one that has Cas9 here. This is the one that is used for uh, genome editing. So type three CRISPR systems are prevalent in Staphylococci and in Archaea, and they contain nine of these Cas genes. Cas10 is the signature gene. And um, I uh, studied a CRISPR system is present in Staphylococcus epidermidis that has only three spacers. The first spacer match uh, matches a, a sequence on uh, staphylococcal conjugated plasmids, and this is the, the spacer, or these are the experiments that we, uh, immunity against the, the conjugated plasmid was, was what I did as a postdoc, and I, I told you uh, about. When I started at Rockefeller, uh, my own lab, I, I decided to look at 
the ability of this CRISPR to um, uh, prevent phage infection, given that SPACER2 here matches uh, a common staphylococcal uh, phage. To tell, to let, to, to, for you to understand the, the, the experiments that we did, I will introduce you very briefly to the life cycle of uh, temperate phages. Temperate phages uh, are, uh, lambda is the, the most uh, studied temperate phage. And temperate phages inject DNA into the cell, and that, and after injection, they have two different uh, um, possibilities, two different life cycles, either the, the lytic cycle or the lysogeny cycle. And um, in the lytic cycle, the phage circularizes in the cell and it starts transcribing all the lytic genes, and that leads to the propagation of the phage and the killing of the host. Uh, uh, in contrast, in the lysogeny uh, uh, life cycle, the phage becomes a provirus, uh, a prophage. It integrates into the um, uh, chromosome of bacteria and remains semi-dormant there. And at the uh, molecular level, this uh, choice of uh, pathway is governed by a bidirectional promoter. If when the in DNA is injected, there's some sort of a tug of war between these two promoters, and if the rightward promoter wins, then the lytic genes are expressed, and then that leads to the death of, of the host. If the leftward promoter uh, wins, then the lysogeny genes are expressed, and these genes promote the integration of the phage into the chromosome. And very importantly for this talk, uh, the rightward promoter in the, in the provirus is completely uh, silenced, because you, you, you probably will appreciate that the phage doesn't want, in a way, to express the lytic genes that will lead to the death of the host that is harboring it in its chromosome. So uh, this is the staphylococcal phage, a temperate phage, FNM1. This is the bidirectional promoter, lysogeny genes, lytic genes. And the CRISPR system targets uh, uh, this region of the lytic uh, area of, uh, of, of, the, of the genome. This is the CRISPR RNA sequence. This is the DNA target sequence. And the first thing we wanted to know was whether CRISPR was able to uh, uh, have an effect not only in the lytic propagation of the, of the virus, but also on the lysogeny, uh, cell, uh, lysogenic cycle. And the first experiment was to measure the ability of the phage to propagate in the presence or absence of this CRISPR system. Here's uh, uh, the cells, uh, the phage propagation in the absence of CRISPR immunity, and here in the presence of this CRISPR RNA. And you can see the uh, six, about six orders of magnitude of reduction of the phage propagation, as I show you in that earlier slide. But the surprise came when we looked at whether the CRISPR system was able to prevent the lysogenization cycle. And we, here in this plot, we have the total cells that were infected with phage in white, and the cells that became lysogens, that were the virus integrated, are in blue. And we, did the, we didn't see any difference uh, on uh, whether we had or didn't have CRISPR immunity. And that was surprising because the, the point of showing you these sequences was to, 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 to make a note that the same sequence is present both in the provirus as well as in the virus that is actively uh, killing the cell. So this was the first indication that this CRISPR system, the type 2 CRISPR system, uh, care about not only the sequence, the target sequence, something more uh, ec more uh, uh, about uh, more than the target sequence was important, that the presence of a target sequence was important to uh, provide CRISPR immunity since this type 3 si system was able to kill this lytic phage but not, was not able to touch the integration of the prophage. So the, the key experiment or the breakthrough experiment came from the analysis of CRISPR escapers. We were doing this experiments with a CRISPR system targeting this side of the phage. And I told you that the propagation is reduced by six orders of magnitude, but it's never fully reduced. There are always some phages that can make plaques or escape the CRISPR immune system. And the most common way of, of phages to escape CRISPR immunity is by making mutations in the target sequence. When that happens, the CRISPR RNA guide cannot recognize properly the target, and therefore the, the phage uh, escapes CRISPR uh, cleavage. Um, we found some of those, but many of those, they had, many of the, of the escapers, they actually had uh, an intact target, but they contain instead mutations uh, in the promoter, in, the, in this leftward promoter here. The mutations was in the, in the minus 10 element, 
And this was a mutation that I don't have time the, the, to, to, to show you the data, but this was uh, uh, prevented this promoter from functioning. So there was no transcription across the target. So this was the first suggestion or, or evidence that these type three systems require transcription across the target for immunity. And we did some other experiments actually to, to demonstrate that, that I don't have uh, time to show you. So what happens, the reason why um, the, this type three CRISPR system prevents uh, uh, or attacks the lytic cycle but not the lysogenic cycle is because when the, the virus is in the pro-virus state, then uh, there's no transcription across this region of the virus and this CRISPR system require, requires transcription for targeting. So, so, um, so that's the explanation of, of this data. And this is beneficial for bacteria because in a way it's, it's, it's allowing to, to keep the provirus, which in, in many way, in many instances, uh, provirus have co-evolved with bacteria and they confer some benefits for the host. So uh, to, to really show that, that so that, that those experiments determined that CRISPR immunity requires transcription, type 3 CRISPR immunity requires transcription, and we wanted to know whether um, DNA cleavage by type 3 systems also require transcription, and so we did the, we turned to biochemistry, we purify the nucleus of this, uh, RNA-guided nucleus of these uh, um, uh, systems, which is a complex actually of five different subunits, CAS10 and CSM. Uh, two, three, four, and five. And then uh, we did the experiments uh, 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 using a target DNA, which are two oligos annealed to each other, but the, it only, we only see target cleavage when we use RNA polymerase in the test tube and when we add RNTPs. Here, if, you, if we uh, generate these substrates that we call them elongation complexes that are stalled, uh, there's no actual elongation without RNTPs, we incubate that with CRISPR, with the Cas10 complex, there's no cleavage. The moment we add our NTPs and polymerase uh, 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 transcribes across the target, then we see cleavage. And we found out that the uh, active side of, of, of uh, the DNA's active side of the Cas10 complex was in the Cas10 subunit itself in something we call the PAN domain. Uh, a mutant uh, in this domain does not do any cleavage. And then also uh, something that was uh, demonstrated by the Turns group in Georgia very early on is that the Cas10 complexes also can cleave RNA. If you incubate that Cas10 complex with a single-stranded RNA substrate that is complementary to the CRISPR RNA, that substrate gets cleaved. And we corroborated this in our studies with our own complex. And the active site for uh, the RNA cleavage is in CSM3, a mutant in the active side does not do any uh, uh, RNA cleavage. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm about to finish. Uh, so this, um, uh, the, the model that we have is that type three CRISPR immunity relies, the molecular mechanism relies on the co-transcriptional CRISPR RNA guided cleavage of a target DNA and its transcripts. And the complex uh, cleaves uh, not only the DNA, but also cleaves the transcript. We did. Uh, in vivo experiments to show that the cleavage of RNA is actually cleavage of the transcript of the target DNA. And of course the next question was, uh, it's somewhat evident why DNA cleavage is required to eliminate the phage, but why is also required transcript cleavage? And um, I actually, uh, we, we did the genetics experiments, we, there's only actually two RNases, three and six, and what we found is that when we mutate those uh, RNases and we have a CRISPR system that is RNA minus, we see that immunity, uh, the RNA activity is required for immunity against late targets. So these are three targets that are early expressed in the, in the, uh, um, in the phage uh, uh, cycle, transcription cycle, and these are three targets that are expressed late. And if we mutate the, the, the RNAs, the, uh, if you target the early uh, genes, the cells grow very well after addition of phage, but uh, if uh, we don't target, uh, if we target late genes, the cells die. So this, this late targeting requires uh, the RNases. And the model that we have, we did other experiments that I don't have to, to show you, is that because of this transcription requirement, uh, if it's an early gene that is the target, then transcription across the early gene happens very quickly after phage starts the lytic cycle and the DNA of the phage 
is clearly quickly is clear quickly but if the lay, if the target is an LA gene then it can be 15 20 minutes until the expression of the target so the crispr system the type 3 crispr system doesn't touch the phage until uh, about 20 minutes after infection and uh, that is a problem because if you let a phage 20 minutes without any challenge it will do many copies of itself and it will be start it will start to kill the cell so our model at the moment is that the RNA's activity of this CRISPR system degrades the transcript to prevent the completion of the phage lytic cycle and give time uh, to the CRISPR system to clear all the DNA of the phage so uh, I, I mentioned that uh, uh, we this is just an example of the interesting CRISPR biology just by looking at type 3 we see this kind of interesting mechanisms of immunity and we are very interested in looking at the rest of the biology of CRISPR systems to see what they have to surprise us. With that, I'd like to thank the people that did the job, that took the, uh, collected the data I presented, Gregory with the transcription-dependent immunity, Pulami with the in vitro experiments, and Wen Yan with uh, the, um, uh, the function of RNA ACEs uh, in the CRISPR system. Also, the funding, Seale, Rita Allen, Hima Hirschel, Sinsheimer and Boros Welcome Foundations, and NIH. And thank you again, ASM, ASBMB, for this tremendous award. I would be happy to take any questions if we have time. <laughs>